Welcome to Yoga Biz Camp with myself, Michael J. I'm a yoga business coach with 25 plus years of experience as a creative, a total tech geek, and a yoga business owner. Welcome to another episode of Yoga Biz Camp, and I'm excited to have Eric Piera from Yoga Body Studios in California. Welcome, Eric. Hi, thank you. I, uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing Eric on Zoom squares on Mind Body <laughs> Champ meetings for probably a year and a half, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I got to go to the amazing Mind Body Bold Conference in San Diego, and we got to meet in for reals, uh, <laughs> three dimension, and you got to see people from a side profile instead of a front profile. And uh, we had some great uh, dinners together and some great times. And um, I think we made a lot of great friendships out of that experience. So uh, it was nice to meet you in person, Eric, and I'm really thrilled to have you here today. Awesome, it's very awesome to be here. I am just gonna read out your bio. Okay. And then we'll go from there. So Eric is part owner and president of Yoga Body Studios in Southern California. Eric has 25 years of experience in the wellness industry as a chiropractic working in sports medicine, industrial medicine, and family practice. He joined Yoga Body in 2015 to open the first studio in Chino, California. Am I saying that right? Yes. California that has persevered through COVID-19 and was voted the number one live virtual yoga studio in all of California by Yelp in September 2020. That's amazing. After 25 years of working in the healthcare industry, Eric believes that the future of medicine is in the wellness industry that will boom after this pandemic pandemic as it did after the last one. Eric is immersed in the yoga industry through the Mind Body Champs program and is one of the moderators of the Mind Body One platform. Look for him there. Yes. Yeah. So tell me how, so I, you, you're um, a little bit about your background. Like how, how did you get into the yoga business? How did, how did that come up after you. So my, uh, sorry, my, my business partner was teaching at a local studio. I'm in Fullerton and um, he just filled every single class. You know, I discovered yoga and as much as I was in the wellness industry, what yoga was doing for me um, was beyond anything I'd ever realized. You know, like anything else, um, if you're in me you know, medicine, um, you're specialized in whatever you do. And um, what I saw happening, I thought, I need to incorporate this into my practice. I need to obviously incorporate it into my personal wellness. And um, my partner had broken off and he wanted to open his own place. And it's a very long story. It's a bit complicated, but I started doing teacher training with him. He had a falling out with his partner and it wasn't really going really well. And myself and a couple of other business people um, jumped in to help him open the space that we're in here now. So that's kind of like the short version of how I got involved in the field. And, and so have you, did you, you, are you a yoga teacher or just practitioner? I'm yoga teacher training. I've never taught a single class because in the middle of teacher training, I got immersed in the business. Yeah. It was all I can handle, <laughs> you know, so I'm practicing full time. I'm in Irvine, California, and I'm, I'm working in the yoga business on the side, you know, in between patients. And it's all I can handle. I would love to teach one day. I'm just not there yet. Yeah, and it's its own it's its own thing, right? There's a whole. I mean, running a yoga studio and teaching are very different things, and take different. Right. Skills. If you're new, if you're new in the yoga business, you're going to find out just how hard it is. It's yeah, so, <laughs> it's so it's so involved. It takes up all of your time just to run the business. Yeah, yeah, and well, here you are. I I was looking through your website, and ten years later, you're celebrating ten years. Yeah, so he started practicing 10 years ago in the area, or teaching, I should say, in the area 10 years ago. So I got involved in 2015 when I was doing um, the teacher training. So he, he opened up, he, so his Mind Body account is 10 years old. Yeah. I got involved in the last six, seven years. 
Yeah. And so I know, you know, I had a studio for 13 years and I know even in the last six or seven years, there's been tough times. I mean, nothing quite compared to what we'll get to that, what we're going through right now. But, uh, you know, I went through a couple of recessions and, yeah. and, uh, and, you know, I had times where you think it's all going great and then it's not so great. And then it's fake it till you make it. And yes. so any lessons through tough times um, or any experiences where, you know, that you went through and learned from? So, you know, um, we missed a big recession, but obviously through the pandemic, what you learn is that everything you ever feared as a business owner comes to light, right? Now you're having to lay people off. Um, uh, you haven't hired people. Like we made it pretty much through the first big dip, right? And then there was another spike in the virus uh, closures and openings. And a second closure really hit us hard. And we had, a lot, a lot, we had to let a lot of people go. And you learn that um, as a business owner, regardless of what you do, if you're a, business, you're a yoga teacher, you have to become a, a, a manager, a business owner. Yeah, yeah. And the decisions you have to make there are really tough. And you just got to do it. You know, once we did it, we're like, okay, you know, we can, we, can, we can do this. We let some people go. We figured out how to do it. And now, you know, from now on, we know that we can deal with these things are going to be hard to foresee it. And we go, okay, this is probably going to happen. We're going to hire, but there's going to be a dip and then we're going to have to listen. Yeah. I, and I know as owning a studio that you, you feel like you're sort of on an island in your own little world and not many people understand the business. But I've talked a bit about this on previous podcast episodes, but, you know, you're part of the Mind Body One community and, and the Champs program. And uh, I've said this before, but I'll repeat it because what I saw happening was all these studios doing quickly doing free stuff on Instagram and YouTube and all of that stuff. But on the Mind Body One community, very, very quickly, everybody was like, nope, stop, don't do that, don't cancel your memberships, don't. So there was, there was this amazing thing of our yoga business community coming together and helping each other through that Did, that must have helped you through that time you know i'll go i'll go a step further the one the mind body one community is amazing because now you don't necessarily feel alone yeah. but um you know for the purpose of this podcast if you're thinking about owning a yoga studio you have to really think about whether or not you can stomach doing the business by yourself so yeah. There's like three or four partners. Um, you know, the, the one founder is the yoga teacher, but the reason that we were able to survive, you know, and still be sane today is because we divvied up the responsibility. We leaned on each other personally inside the business. Obviously, you can use Mind Body One if you're already out there by yourself, but to have a partnership or to have a mentor, you know, go find a mentor, go find a, um, you know, a, um, not a not a counselor, but a, a consultant. Thank you. Yeah, um, and lean on people personally, and that's going to help you more than anything. Yeah. So, how many partners are there in the business? So we've got we've got. I mean, if you count the founder and his wife, and there's three other business partners. So there's like five partners. Okay, so that's something I've never been through, and and kind of can't imagine. How is that? And how how are it's partnerships? Like, it's like a, it's like a marriage. Yeah. It's, yeah. Great. <laughs> there's a lot of headbutting, but if you can navigate that, then there's a lot of leaning on other people, and we've all had to lean on each other, and um, it was very helpful. You know, yeah. if, you, if you're a big, if you find yourself to be a big adult, and you can be really humble inside of a business partnership, it, it it'll work. So, what is um, you know divvying up the roles? What is your role? I'm I'm just the business. I'm just the business partner. You, you would know? say you're solely on the business side of things. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I'm also in charge of the software stack. Actually, we have a big meeting today about um, making sure that it's all aligned. Um, and because I'm so involved in MindBody and the MindBody One community, I know the software more than anybody else. So I'm doing a lot of that. And I, I'm like a consultant. I consult for the business and what's happening in the studio. But for the most part, I'm on my computer doing all the business. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah, I, I mean, I'd, I'd love to talk a little bit about the software side of things. I mean, everybody's familiar about MindBody, 
um, as the studio management software. But there are a lot of um, add-ons and things that can, you know, and I hear people saying, oh, but that's an extra expense, you know, for say automations and marketing. And can you give me a little rundown of sort of the magic yeah. menu of what um, works for your business? Yeah, you know what's interesting is there is there's there is a magic menu for us or us a magic magic menu. Yeah. I've helped people try to put their software together just personally, and some of it doesn't work for them. Yeah, One of the biggest pieces for us is called Referizer, and it's rewards, it's uh, referrals, and um, a couple other things. And we started in 2017, and they good, they do a good job of telling us how much time they've saved us. You know, we've sent so many emails we've sent so many text messages you know reminders um requests for reviews we're the number one reviewed uh yoga studio in all of southern california we're in chino we're not in, we're not in you know la we're not you know we're not in the most populated places in yeah. the world. software does such a great job for us you know that we're out there a lot and we get a lot of help uh promoting the studio so it's it's referizer for all those things. BrandBot is a huge um, kind of uh, automation for a lot of other stuff. It's really amazing. And the, we have a couple of other pieces of software. Yeah. I have a team of people coming today because I've told them all, like, I just can't keep it on my brain. We need help. We're putting a lot of heads together today. It's yeah. Cool. And those software, you know, those softwares take quite a bit of setup, right? The, the you know, the BrandBot, which for those people that are not sure what BrandBot is, it's a automated marketing. Um, so, for example, if somebody purchase a, is a intro pass, then you trigger off a sequence of emails or if somebody hasn't visited. Um, That's the biggest one for us. It's called the, it's called the, um, the drip campaign. So yeah. if somebody purchases something, they don't necessarily come in or they create a profile and they haven't come in yet to purchase something. You know, we have a, we have a campaign that hits them every so often like, hey, you know, uh, it's not too late. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? Maybe a few months later, we're like, hey, did you forget us? We're still here. Uh, here's a special offer for you. It's a very powerful. And so, you know, a lot of people go, oh, that's an extra expense. But I'm hearing from you that makes you money. Absolutely. Absolutely. The automation replaces your man hours. You don't want, you don't want to pay man hours. Yeah. Yeah. You want to use the software to its full ability. And it takes brain work because the software is only as smart as you are. Yeah, so it's the setup, I'm, right? I'm getting and, more brains in to help. <laughs> and I imagine it's also putting the studio's personality into the messaging as well. So another part of what we're doing today is making sure that the brand is consistent across the board. It's hard to do. There's a lot of setup. Yeah, yeah. Um, so speaking of manpower, let's talk about teams. Um, I, I know uh, managing a, a, a team of um, teachers and front desk staff. I mean, that's it's, it's a whole thing on its own as well, right? It's a, it's okay. a, you know, and I know I'm when I first started, I didn't have a clue about that stuff. And I just kind of, you know, learned along the way. And then it was like, okay, I need to create an onboarding manual. And now, like with my clients now, it's like the first thing we do, it's onboarding manuals, it's um, mm -hmm. studio operation manuals and the systems. Um, so tell me a little bit about team building, mistakes, what you've learned and um, what's worked. Yeah, we, we've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> It's, it's the human uh, factor, right? The human factor is a little bit different to the computer factor. <laughs> it is. I mean, if anything, I've, if anything, what I've learned is that you take your personality and you go with it. You know, it doesn't have to be any kind of certain way. You don't have to be like a hard boss or anything. Um, you take your personality, you have fun with it, but you have to make sure that everything is lined up, right? So we have different manuals for our management staff. We have a few people doing management, and then we've got manuals for our teacher staff. And the teacher staff is actually much bigger. So we have right now, I think, 15 teachers. Yeah. And um, it takes a lot of team building. You don't see each other very often. Sometimes we have teachers that teach one or two classes, and they're not seen very much. So it takes a lot of work to make sure that everybody's put together. We had a great party last summer, and it was just, yeah. it was just amazing. You know, and you just got to do it and have fun. Yeah. And, uh, what happens is you, 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 you build your team. Um, you become connected. And everybody is working towards a goal to try to make the business work. Yeah. And you are, your studio is only as good as your teachers. 
right? I mean, really, that, that's your asset. And I, with my team, I put a lot of effort into that, them um, because, you, you know, they're the face of the studio. They're the reason that people are coming. All right, let's keep it real here. In the middle of the last question, Eric's computer froze, uh, rebooted, and started installing updates. So 15 minutes later, oh, we're going to pick up where we left. <laughs> <There it goes. laughs> this is reality. This is real life. <laughs> so I think we were talking about staff and teams. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, so... You know, like I said, we were only we're only as good as our, our our team members. And I put a lot into my teams, and I used to spoil them and take them every year to the spa for a night. And um, so, yeah. So, what do you do for yourself to um, keep that team motivation and connection? Yeah, we try to do a lot of activities. We had a great party recently, um, but it's just the day to day. You know, we just try to keep try to keep everybody's spirits up. Um, we celebrate birthdays, you know, it's, 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 for me, it's the little things. It's every day. It's celebrating little wins um, and, and talking and supporting a lot of people throughout their day-to-day lives. Cause you know, we're still in difficult times. Um, and when somebody has a hard time, you know, they'll come up, they'll come to work and there'll be some coffees and some treats and stuff. It's, day -day, it's all the day-to-day -day stuff. I think. Yeah. Stuff. How do you deal with the really difficult, how do you deal with the difficult, um, situations that come up with staff you know we try to be supportive so we we've, we've had a couple of members um who've had some folks that have gotten sick with covid um we cover them very quickly and just give them a lot of uh verbal loving support um it's, it's just a lot it's it's a lot of little things you know yeah when it comes to, so one of my issues used to be the subbing situation yeah. um, because I, my studio was one block from my home. And <laughs> so that's almost too close because I could walk over in my pajamas and my fuzzy slippers. Right. And so <sighs> when somebody, uh, you know, last minute called in sick or something like that, I was the closest. And so I had to, um, be the one that stepped in a lot and that can be very draining when you're managing yeah. the studio you're yeah. te maybe teaching and and then you also have to step in as a teacher so how do you deal with the sub situation you know I'm going to tell you the truth right now it's a struggle for us um, yeah. haven't had a problem you know up until recently even through COVID somehow we were doing great and we're having to in the, say the last three to four months we're having to cancel classes I think a lot of our success comes from always having our classes available. We've yeah. never had a problem through COVID, everything. The last three or four months, we've had to cancel classes. We just don't have it. And the hiring, hiring is an issue right now. A lot of people don't want to go back to work. A lot of people are still worried about being around crowds. So um, in the past, we've had somebody who's just afloat that's just going to always be available, available to cover. Um, and that's really important for us. Um, lately we've had to cancel classes. It's just absolutely crazy, but we do a WhatsApp group and, um, okay. yeah. it's big when it's, when it's, when it's a, an important class, you know, a, a primetime class we will offer even up to like a $50, um, bonus to come in. Oh, and class. Okay. So it's very active. We're very active on WhatsApp. Um, yeah. So actually, do you find, do you find that, um, do you find that cause some people are using, Trello or Slack, uh, NetGym, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of things out there that are using um, the, where I work, we're using email and I, I don't find email very successful for that because not everybody replies or sometimes they go into junk. And so you're finding that having a dedicated space a lot easier where they get a notification yeah. on their yeah. phone. Yeah. There's a couple of pieces, of, there's a couple of pieces of software. And I think that we were a bold and somebody else has, um, there's a piece of software out there. Actually, they're a big company now, and they offer a, a sub software, um, you know, option. And we're finding that WhatsApp works for us. It's free. Yeah, yeah. it's WhatsApp. It, it dings you like a text message, so it doesn't get lost in spam. Yeah. And when I when I figured out the the proper the hiring process, where I had a real onboarding manual and had those you know conversations up front of these are our expectations this is how 
I want the studio to run. I don't want you on your mat stretching before class. I want you up front um, at, you know, recognizing everybody by name, welcome them through yes. the door. So I poured all that in the onboarding manual when I hired them. And then we agreed to that. And then what I found was when things weren't going well, we could go back to, well, remember when you signed on the dotted line, we had this conversation. So okay. something similar to yourself? We have a couple of processes, actually. So we have the yoga process. We have a lead teacher, and she does what you do. And then I take them, and I go through the business side. I actually take them through the entire software process. Okay. I show them just how involved it is to attract and retain our clients, and they really and they really get it. They see the business side of it as well as the yoga side. They know what the expectation is when we come and teach, but they understand what it takes for us to keep the doors open. And that helps us out a lot. They really get a buy-in and they understand. Yeah, that's a great, great, great tip. Yeah. So moving forward, we're, you know, we've kind of gone through probably and going through the worst of times, you know, where things have been, you know, uh, for the studio that I sold, you know, we were 30 people um, space in there. I always think of the yoga mats as real estate space. And, um, and, you know, they're down right now where we are in Canada to uh, eight people in class, which is, you know, yeah, it's a massive thing, right? And we've gone. So where, where are you at with your studio as far as capacity right now? I think we're only at 60, 60%. Yeah. Uh, there's a little bit of wiggle room. The people who come should be comfortable uh, because our spaces are big. We have a room that holds 50. We have a room that holds 25. So the room that holds 50, you know, we're like at 22 or so. Right. And uh, the other room is like at, um, you know, 8 to 10, uh, kind of the same thing. But they're big spaces. Yeah. So um, you have to be comfortable because it's still tight. Yeah. 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 And um, so, and I also saw one of the things I saw, which I love, you guys do aerial yoga. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. I was in, a, my, my studio was in a hundred year old heritage building and uh-huh. I, I went through the whole process of, of almost buying the aerials and everything. And then we had a structural person come and say, this building ain't going to work for you. You know, the same thing happened to us. We use rigs and I, and I wish I was down there. I'd show you a picture. It, um, and for you personally, I'm going to take a picture of it. I'm going to send it to you. You can put them anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Um, is, has that become a big part of your business? Well, yeah, the problem, <laughs> the problem is you only have so many silks and we have so many space. So yeah. many spaces. If we could put it in the big room and have um, 10, 15 silks, it'd be bigger. Right now we can do it four at a time. But it's super yeah. fun. It's super it's, fun. It's you know? so fun. It feels so good to... It adds to the atmosphere of the studio. It's amazing. It yeah. A buzz. Now, the other thing I saw with the aerial, you also do aerial teacher training and yes. teacher training. How big of a part of teacher training is your business? Is that coming back oh, now? Oh, yeah. Well, we've always had it. You know, we did, we did live virtual teacher training. Yeah. And um, like I said, you know, when you're reading my profile, you know, wellness is going to boom. You know, people are understanding that you can't eat a hamburger and uh, 50 years later, um, you're not going to be healthy. And especially from the pandemic, um, we're learning that the more unhealthy you are, the more likely you're going to get really sick when there's something like this, you know. So wellness is going to boom. It boom, you know, all the, all the you know, the, the funny wellness things that we, you know, seen in the past all came from the Spanish flu, the 1918 flu. Because they had in their time the notion that you had to be healthy to not get really sick from a virus like this. So teacher training is going to really boom. You know, we're doing 15, 20 people a shot. We're doing two to three a year, depending on what the schedule is. Um, and I think it's going to really grow. Yeah. So let's talk about the future. We're moving into 2022. Yeah. I, I'm seeing that people are you know well first of all mental health has come into the forefront now or you know it's like it's not a taboo subject now I think um, I mean unfortunately because of the pandemic but now I think it's it's a conversation people are able to have it's great yeah it is great I I'm I'm a practicing chiropractor I don't do mental health myself but I counsel people every single day and now nobody is afraid to say that they're on a medication or that they suffer 
anxiety or they suffer from depression, it's very commonplace and it really helps the process because I feel like I'm really successful when I can counsel somebody what they do day to day to make sure that they're physically healthy. And you better believe I tell them, go do yoga because not only are you going to be physically better, but you're going to be mentally better. And those things are going to really, they're going to really boom. 2022, we're going to figure out how to get around um, the pandemic, the, the virus, because it's never going to go away. Right. Yeah, it's, it's like, I think we are learning how to keep ourselves safe. I mean, when we went to the conference, you know, I was in my bubble for 17 months by myself and I went through heart surgery through that by myself. So it was a crazy time. Crazy. So going to the conference was where there's a thousand people coming from all over the world was very, very scary for me. But what, you know, go, being in an elevator on the 25th floor with my mask on and other people without masks on, you know, it was, like, but I, what I realized from that was I can keep myself safe. And I think that's, you know, where we're going to be moving a little yeah. bit more into the future next year. Yeah. Is that people realize yeah. we can navigate this and hopefully keep ourselves safe. And yeah. Well, you keep yourself safe, but you have the power to make yourself healthy to make yourself well, so you're not as susceptible. You know, and as a chiropractor, again, I don't do viruses. And I thought I understood something about viruses. I don't understand viruses. I don't think anybody does. And everybody wants to become an expert, but you're going to be less susceptible if you're well. Yeah. If you're in the yoga industry, I'm telling you, people are going to gravitate to wellness, yoga, meditation. It's going to boom. So you're feeling optimistic about very, very. Yeah. Rich yeah. Meyer said this in the um, opening uh, talk for Bold, and you know people were saying this when the pandemic hit. This is what's going to happen now because it's just like the Spanish flu. Go study the Spanish flu, except for the variants. I didn't really understand, you know, where that fell then, but it's going to happen. It's going to be an economic boom. There's going to be a wellness boom coming out of this. Yeah. All right, I'm going to end, end Eric with a few fun questions that I always have done. So I want you to tell me something most people wouldn't know about you. Um, I'm 100% Hispanic, and, I, and some people see it and some people don't. And when I speak Spanish, um, it really throws people off. It's actually kind of funny. Okay. <laughs> I'm fluent in Spanish. I grew up in a Spanish home. <laughs> Spanish okay. descent, so you can't, you know, I'm not like Mexican, so you can't see it. Awesome. Well, I tell you, I'm in, uh, usually in Canada, I'm in LA for two months right now. And let me tell you, I'm enjoying a lot of Spanish food right now. Yes, the best <laughs> Mexican. There's some great Mexican places in Pasadena. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, all right. So favorite business tools, website or app? Um, I like Fitgrid. Fitgrid is... Yeah. Uh, connecting people or connects your teachers directly to your students and they have a direct way of showing you how it impacts your return rate and they have a student to student app which I think is going to really explode so you can see who's in your class you can invite people who haven't come to the studio which I personally like as an owner but I like it as a I like it as a student because I can see who's in my class and post pandemic I used to be like drop in, don't bother me. And now I'm the chattiest guy in the class. I want to see people. I want to talk to people. I want to connect with people. Yeah. With them, and I, I'm all about it. It is all about the connection, right? And the community. And yeah, I, uh, I am um, a big fan of the FitGrid app and NT, the owner. And, yes, he's great. Yeah. And, uh, and I use it also as a teacher um, for a studio. I, yeah. I use it to connect with the students saying, you know, you get yes. that first visit. Welcome. Well, great having you in class. And again, yeah. it gives you that little connection to it's the a huge benefit. Yeah. Without giving the, the teacher's contact information, yes. <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which for a studio owner is kind of important. Um, great. And favorite personal fun website or app um i don't know i'm really social so like all my social media stuff i gotta look you put me on the spot i don't know i'm yeah. on social media like all the time you, so your instagram instagram facebook uh twitter is like my news feed um face, facebook's a little bit more personal my yeah. personal contacts and instagram is more of like who's out there and doing stuff yeah are you following me uh no <laughs> Looking after change, that. <laughs> but I will. I will now. <laughs> Yoga biz champ. <laughs> I will. I will. Now. Shameful. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs>
Eric, <laughs> tell um, tell the peeps where they're going to find Yoga Body. So um, obviously we're in Chino, California. Uh, you can look us up at yogabodystudios.com. I'm at eric at yogabodystudios.com. And drop me any messages, any questions, and I'm, I'm always happy to help. I love this industry. I love the people in this industry. You know, as you can see in bold, you know, it's a hard open and heart first kind of people and my kind of people. And I just, I love the industry. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's And it's better to have you in it. <laughs>